Hi, my name is Dr. Beth Simony, and I am a computational biologist at the Broad Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I study. You might know already, inside every person, there are lots of organs like the heart and the brain, and that each organ is made up of lots of tiny cells. Cells come in all different types, and the types can have very different shapes. Skin cells look very different from red blood cells, and both look very different from brain cells, which we call neurons. I started in biology as a cell biologist, who is just a biologist who studies how cells work. Some things we study just because we find them interesting and we want to know more. But we also want to study cells because when something goes wrong and a person gets sick, we want to understand what is happening inside their cells that's making them sick so that we can try to help them get better or keep other people from getting sick in the same way. There are lots of ways that cell biologists use to study cells, but my favorite one is the microscope. People have been using microscopes to study cells for a long time. This picture is from a biologist named Santiago Ramon y Cajal, who drew these pictures of neurons all the way back in 1899. Back then, microscopes were pretty simple looking, but nowadays they are often a lot bigger and take digital pictures. So how do we use microscopes to actually study cells? We do this by adding special dyes to the cells. Each dye is a different color and goes to a different part of the cell, and cells have a lot of different parts. When we look under a microscope then, by figuring out where the different colors are, we can find different parts of the cell. Parts like the nucleus, which is where your genes are, and those give your cells instructions. Or parts like the mitochondria, which make the cells energy. Or the cytoskeleton, literally the cell's skeleton, which helps the cell keep its shape. When we find each part, we can measure how big it is, what shape it is, and if it's in the right place. How does that help us? It helps us because then we can look at lots and lots of healthy cells and get a good idea of what a cell is supposed to look like. By then, making cells unhealthy in lots of ways, like adding a drug that damages their genes or one that damages their cytoskeleton, we can make a library of what cells look like when we change them in lots of ways. Here's a real example of that. It's a picture of what healthy cells look like under the microscope. The cytoskeleton is in red, and the nucleus, the part with the genes in it, is in blue. You can see that all of the cells don't look exactly the same, but that they're all pretty similar. Now here's a picture of some cells after we add something that hurts their genes and causes what we call DNA damage. The nucleus now looks much bigger, and that some of the cells and the nuclei have some holes in them. Overall though, they look kind of the same. If we add a drug that compromises the cell's skeleton, the cells now have all kinds of different funny shapes because they can't hold their shape correctly. Now how does looking at all of those unhealthy cells help us? It helps because then when we have a cell that something is wrong with it, but we don't know exactly what, we can play detective. Showing you this picture and saying what's going wrong in these cells, you might not immediately be sure. But if I show you this picture and say, please compare it to healthy cells, cells with damage to their genes, and cells with damage to their cytoskeleton, you can probably see that the closest match is the cells with the damage in the cytoskeleton. So that's probably what's happening in those cells we didn't know what was going on with. Where I work now at the Broad Institute, scientists have figured out a way to not just look at one or two parts of the cells at a time, but sometimes up to five parts at a time. We call it cell painting. Personally, I think it's really pretty. Nowadays, I don't work using a microscope anymore, but instead I write a computer program that can be used to measure all of these different cell painting pictures 
and can tell us how big the parts are, if cells are the right shape, or if parts of the cells are in right places in both healthy cells and sick cells. I work as part of a big team that all writes different parts of these programs, and every time we get a new picture of a cell, we take all its measurements, usually about 5,000 measurements of each cell. We've looked at lots and lots of pictures with this cell painting technique. More than a million million cells, each of which was treated with one of many thousands of drugs. This now lets us be really good at playing the matching game. If someone comes to us and says that they have cells that are sick, but they aren't sure why, we can try to match it against all of the pictures we've ever taken to try to figure out what's wrong. Or, if someone has cells there that are sick and they want to try to figure out which medicine might make them better, we can take those sick cells and look at them with lots of drugs and try to play the matching game again so that we know which drugs might best help people who have a particular illness. We play this matching game with hundreds of people studying dozens of things every year, and the longer we play, the better we get. We hope that going forward, this helps makes it easy to find new medicines or to figure out faster what people are sick with so that they can get good medicine sooner. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to the people whose pictures and movies I've used in this video today and to the people who paid for this work.